I started my journey with mobile development around 10 years back in 2011 when I got my first Android phone which was an Expedia X10 mini. I've published apps, contributed to open source, did full stack and now working on the framework side of Android operating system. Today, I'm going to bring the best of my learnings and convince you to not become one. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, this video is important for anyone interested in becoming a mobile engineer or a full stack engineer because all apps eventually fall under this category of internet enabled software. Let's take a 100 feet look at the last decade of mobile development with a special focus on Android. In 2010, Android development was mostly Java and XML. There were only a few best practices available on multi-threading and going async. In 2011, Google introduced the Android support library, which made it easier to develop for earlier versions of Android. In 2013, Facebook introduced React JS, which was a paradigm shift in how we write web apps. In 2015, Facebook introduced React Native, which allowed you to write code once and to run it on Android, iOS, and the web. Around the same time, Atom, based on Electron Shell, was introduced which allowed you to build desktop grade apps using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and Node.js. Now couple that with React.js, and you can build amazing apps like the Discord desktop app. In 2017, Google introduced architecture components, which provided an official, opinionated way to architect the apps to avoid all the pain. In 2018, Google renamed the Android support library to Jetpack, and the Java package was refactored to Android X with a lot of new stuff. In the same year, Kotlin coroutines became well-renowned in the community. In the same year, Google also released Flutter, a new cross-platform framework. In 2019, Google made Kotlin the preferred language for Android development and released Jetpack Compose, a new state-driven composable UI toolkit that uses Kotlin. In the same year, Kotlin Flow and Channels were also introduced, which made the asynchronous story on Android even fancier. In the same year, interestingly, Apple brought in Swift UI for building composable state-driven UIs on iOS, which uses Swift language. In 2020, Google released Hilt, a dependency injection framework for Android, which was more closely integrated with the lifecycle of other stuff in Android, like view model, room database, and a few others. In 2022, Google released Kotlin Multi-Platform Mobile, which allows you to write code once and run it on Android and iOS. <sighs> Okay, so how in the universe can someone catch up with all of this? Being a mobile developer sounds fancy, but when you integrate it over a decade, you realize that it's hard to keep up. And if you are working on mobile software where the team uh, spans to 40, 50 people or more, it becomes even harder to change the code base every year. But you might have noticed one thing that at least on the UI side, all the frameworks are converging into this one concept, UI as a function of state. Feel free to check this article I wrote two years back on how we arrived at this and take a generic approach to understand all the latest technologies like Swift UI, Jetpack Compose, Flutter, and React. So given this history, I hope you understand what you're getting into. Okay, why you should become an Android developer? As far as number of job openings are concerned, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics have projected the Android job openings to grow by 22% in this decade but the openings for web developers is projected to grow by just 13%. As of 2023 January, there are about 3.3 billion Android devices, which is basically the biggest deployment of Linux kernel and the biggest deployment of any operating system the world has ever seen. Now, these two alone should be enough to convince you, uh, but being able to write apps comes with great power, great responsibility and higher risk. For example, if you screw your website, the users will probably refresh the page and it won't even matter. If you screw your mobile app, you have most likely lost the user. And the last thing you want is the user to leave a nice place to review. I have three ways in which you can become an Android developer, easy, medium, and hard. Before exploring these three ways, let's take a look at six most important aspects that you need to learn to make an Android app or an internet enabled mobile software. First one is creating the user interface. You need a way to draw the pixels on the screen. You probably need some SDK which provides you with the necessary APIs to create the UIs and interactions. With web, it's basically the DOM and the various HTML elements. With Android, it's the activity, views, canvas, notifications, deep linking mechanisms, and more stuff. The second one is going asynchronous. You need a way to do things concurrently in the background. It may involve doing some periodic work or communicating with the server to send and receive data using REST APIs, gRPC, WebSockets, whatever. 
Third one is having a data layer or as they call it business logic. Well, I hate that term. With mobile phones, offline use case is very important and unique, which is generally not how you envision a web app. While you still pre-cache and preload the UI resources, but caching data is something which is not frequently done. So you need a way to cache the data locally or store it in a structured form in SQLite database to make it available even when the network is not there. Just be aware that slowly and slowly this use case is getting obsolete because of cheaper data, everyone is connected. And as we have seen in the history, things change before you know it. And it's gone. Poof. And the fourth one is the app specific logic and device capability. You need a way to use Bluetooth, NFC, Wi-Fi, biometrics, camera, or interact with the apps on the device. Fifth one is testing. Uh, whatever code you write, you need a way to test it in an automated way. Unit tests, integration tests. And the sixth and the last one is deployment. Depending on the app store you choose, the process may vary, but yeah, you need a place where the users will access your software. It can be Google Play Store, Amazon App Store, or Apple App Store, whatever. Let's get to the easiest way of becoming Android developer. Assuming that your purpose is to ship to market as soon as possible. I suggest that you don't become an Android developer. Use Flutter. Write the app once and use the same code on Android, iOS, and even web. These days we have living examples like Google Pay, Zerodha, Dream11, eBay, and a lot more. Even BMW's app uses it. Uh, let's quickly compare it with the uh, Android native and other solutions. First parameter is language. Android native uses Kotlin, Twitter uses Dart, React native uses JS or TypeScript, and KMM uses Kotlin. Okay, the next parameter is community support. It's hard to define, but the closest proxy here is the number of pull requests from the GitHub language stats of 2023. Android native is mostly Java and Kotlin, so I'd assume it's huge. Flutter is uh, not the best, but still huge enough as it is closer to Kotlin. React native, because of JS and TS, is huge. And KMM should be bad as it's very new. Device capability. You get almost full capability in all apart from KMM. In KMM, you can't write UIs for iOS as of today. Next, we have cost. Android native will lead to extra development effort on iOS. Total leads to an increase in app size by 10 to 20%, which is the same for React Native. KMM on Android will be same size uh, as native, but on iOS, it's unknown as of now. Then the performance. Well, Android Native has the best performance, of course. Flutter is not far behind because it compiles to native code. React Native is slightly behind because it relies on a bridge to the native code. And from what we just saw, even KMM is not a bad option if you're fine with writing UI twice, but it's very new. Okay, let's get to learning Android development for the sake of getting a job, which is the medium way. The crux here is to use the latest and greatest stuff. The only code lab you want to follow is this one, Android Basics with Compose. For creating UI, learn Jetpack Compose and Jetpack Navigation. You can read about Recycler View. It's not really required for Jetpack Compose, but might be asked in an interview. For all things asynchronous, learn Kotlin coroutines uh, and or Jetpack Work Manager. For server communication, use Retrofit and learn the fundamentals of REST APIs. For the data layer, use the Room database, which would also require you to learn basic SQL. You also need to read about the software design patterns like MVC, MBVM. It might sound absurd at first, but uh, after building a few apps, the software design patterns would seem easier to reason about. For the device capability, you need to learn concepts like broadcast receivers, intents, services, permission handling. For the deployment, you need to learn how to obfuscate your code using ProGuard rules and the deployment on Play Store which is almost straightforward. The most effective way to learn all of these concepts is by building an app from scratch. Choose an idea that involves multiple aspects, such as a to-do app with backend synchronization, attachments, videos, contacts, etc. Building an app in a team of at least three people can provide valuable experience and insights. And for all the resources, see the description below. Let's get to the hard way of learning Android development. These days, it's hard to find a reason why anyone would really go this route. Uh, one reason I can think of is uh, if someone really wants to eventually work on the operating system side of Android, then it's really important to get the basics right. Start with the basics of Java. Head first Java, which I've recommended many times, is probably the best resource. The next thing you should do is learn Kotlin. And the best resource for Java developers is this code lab named Kotlin for Java developers. 
this is where you should quickly build a hello world app and then start building a simple app like a calculator or tic-tac-toe feel free to see any video on youtube they are all great start udacity uh, android course where you build a real project Uracity had a few different courses, but now they have consolidated all of them into two. One is the free course uh, developing Android apps with Kotlin. The other one is a paid nano degree called Learn Kotlin. This course is pretty unique because you will build multiple apps as part of this. Another thing I like about this course is it dives a little deeper into the testing and describes things like test doubles and dependency injection. The price varies from country to country and a lot of times I've seen some discounts as well. This course will take care of the five aspects of mobile development that we talked before. And for the deployment and publishing, you can go through publish your app guide on developers.android.com. I would also go as far as asking you to learn a bit of server development because in order to write an internet enabled mobile software, you need a server. For simplicity, you can use Node.js Express Server. I would also suggest to have a deep dive on all the asynchronous stuff available in Android, apart from core routines. Efficient Android threading book is a great resource for that. One last question that remains is how to keep up. I have just two great resources for you. One is this Android Developer Backstage podcast, which is hosted right from the Google campus by the Android team. The other one is this uh, Android Developers YouTube channel, which has all the latest stuff that's happening with Android development. All right, it's time to wrap up. As seen in the last 12 years, whatever tech you are learning will be obsolete as soon as the next year, but the concepts are there to stay for a longer period of time. The general recommendation from a 10 years experienced senior engineer is that you should focus on the concepts and not be finicky about working on a certain tech. In this new decade of AI and space, the only distinguishing factor an individual can have is adaptability. How quickly they can adapt to the latest stuff. Before you drop, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching Under GB and I will see you in the next one. Bye.